On today's show, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 gets its official launch the same week as Hyundai announced a global recall for its Kona EV, Tesla gears up to use nickel-free, cobalt-free LFP batteries in all of its standard range vehicles, and Amazon continues its worldwide commitment to electrifying its fleet by switching to all-electric three-wheelers in India. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. This week started with the official unveiling of the all-new 2022 Hyundai Ioniq 5 electric CUV. The first vehicle to be built on Hyundai Kia's brand new eGMP platform, this electric vehicle not only looks stunning and very different to anything else on the market, but has decent specifications too. Aside from 800 volt charging capabilities, something which Hyundai says means the Ioniq 5 can recharge from 10% to 80% full in under 20 minutes, and up to 290 miles or 466 kilometers of range, that's with its highest capacity battery, the Ioniq 5 features vehicle to load, a brand new feature for Hyundai that makes it possible to pull up to 3.5 kilowatts of instantaneous AC power from your car to use as an emergency power backup solution. Official pricing and full specs to follow. Rivian has been busy this week, teasing new videos of its production intent R1T taking part in some final winter testing ahead of its planned launch. In a slew of new videos this week, the company also confirmed that it intends first deliveries of the R1T to begin in June this year, which is a few months ahead of the August launch date that we were all expecting. At the same time, a local planning meeting in Salida, Colorado, led to the discovery that Rivian's planned network of high-powered charging stations, called the Rivian Adventure Network, or RAN for short, would be capable of providing up to 300 kilowatts of instantaneous DC power, with voltages ranging between 200 and 920 volts. Now that is a beefy charging station. Amidst a concern for supply chain stability, Tesla has confirmed that it will switch all of its standard range battery packs for its vehicles to use a cheaper lithium iron phosphate or LFP chemistry. Previous generation battery packs used both nickel and cobalt, metals that not only have ethical mining concerns, but which have been soaring in price this year and dropping in availability. While more energy dense and thus better for longer distance packs than LFP, the switch to LFP follows continued development by Tesla in LFP tech, which has seen it churn out significant numbers of LEP battery packed Tesla cars from Giga Shanghai. While LFP packs are heavier and reportedly don't like cold weather as much, the switch makes sense for entry-level Teslas, and it might even make those chars cheaper since LFP is a lot less expensive to produce. Talking of batteries, Redwood Materials, the company founded by former Tesla CTO JB Straubel, has announced that it has entered into an agreement with Envision AESC to recycle its batteries. Who are Envision AESC? Well, that's the name given to the company which spun off from Nissan a few years ago, a company that produced and continues to produce lithium ion battery cells for the Nissan Leaf and Nissan ENV200 electric vehicles. This deal will not only ensure that those battery packs are properly recycled at the end of life, and those materials will then make their way back into the battery supply chain, but it will also give Redwood Recycling a long-term source of income to help it expand and grow its recycling operations in the coming years. Sticking with batteries, one more story that is, Hyundai this week officially announced what must be one of the largest and most expensive recall campaigns in history, certainly the most expensive EV recall campaign, totaling more than $900 million worth of cost. Confirming that it will replace the battery packs in more than 75,000 Hyundai Kona EVs, nearly 6,000 Ioniq EVs, and 305 city buses, the recall is the accumulation of a long investigation into the cause of multiple Hyundai Kona fires around the world in the last 12 months. Hyundai used LG Energy supplied cells that were produced at an LG facility in Nanjing, China for all of its affected vehicles, and after a software update failed to stop fires from occurring, has opted for this costly recall instead. 
LG Chem said the fault was caused by a misalignment during the cell components of manufacture. It's still not clear if it will affect Chevy Bolt EVs or not, which Chevy has said uses a different cell design. We are all used to covering high-end expensive electric motorcycles on this channel, but more affordable models are the ones that really do have a chance of making an impact in the marketplace, which is why we're happy to report on the launch of three new models from Super Soku this week. During a reveal held this week, the company unveiled three new models, a 50cc class equivalent electric scooter and two 125cc equivalent electric motorcycles. The TS Street Hunter and TC Wanderer aren't going to be fast enough for motorway use, but both of these motorcycles should handle surface street commutes even if they have a limited top speed of 46.6 miles per hour or 75 kilometers per hour. In addition to these, there's the Super Soko CU Mini, a moped that younger riders might enjoy. That said, I don't know about much pricing or availability yet, so watch this space. Ahead of its planned launch event next week, Porsche has teased some more video of its production intent Taycan Cross Turismo undergoing final testing. Revealed in concept form several years ago now, the Cross Turismo shares much of the Porsche Taycan's underpinnings, including its insane drivetrain and battery pack. But with a sportback style rear, the Cross Turismo will be marketed at those who want a more outdoorsy adventure vehicle than a standard Taycan can offer. Oh, and of course, those with lots of money and children. Yes, this is another one percenters car, but I've said it before, if it gets people out of their Macans and into something a little more environmentally responsible, I'm all for it. Lucid Bota officially announced it plans to enter into the stock market this week with a special purpose acquisition company merger with Churchill Capital Corp IV. The merger with the SPAC in question, run by financier Michael Klein, will raise about $16.3 billion, leaving Lucid's existing shareholders with $11.75 billion and Lucid itself holding on to $4.4 billion in cash on hand. But it turns out that while both companies were eager for the reverse merger, Wall Street had other ideas. The blank check company's stock more than halved in the few days since the announcement. Part of the concern over this appears to be around the lucid valuation in the deal, but as I've said before, and I will say it again, SPACs are a backdoor onto the stock market, and I'm personally wary of any merger carried out like this. Ever since its ID4 electric car was officially unveiled, Volkswagen has struggled to keep up with demand. In the US, it sold out of its launch edition ID4 in just a few hours, prompting it to expand that launch version to more customers. But this week, Volkswagen announced the first step to remedying the high demand it's had, increasing its production at its Zweikau production facility to introduce a third ID4 production shift. This will make ID4 production 24-7, and it will mean that come the summer, Volkswagen's facility will be making 1,400 electric vehicles every single day. The third shift will start production in April, and by the end of this year, Volkswagen's US production facility will also be online, producing North American market ID4s. After the recent winter storm that hit large parts of the US earlier this month, the topic of being able to power your home from your car has been at the forefront of many people's minds, including my own after I thought we were going to lose power. But if you have a Tesla, running an inverter from your car's 12-volt power source could technically void your warranty, as one Oregonian Tesla owner found out this week. After our recent storm wiped out his power, he connected a 12-volt inverter to his Tesla to provide enough power to operate the electrical system inside his gas furnace, as well as operate his refrigerator and a few lights. But after his Tesla began to send messages stating its 12-volt battery needed replacing, and the local Tesla service sent discovered a Facebook post from him talking about running his car, inverter, to power his home, they say he voided his warranty. There in the terms and conditions is an exclusion prohibiting using your Tesla as a stationary power source. And frankly, that makes me pretty mad. How about you? And finally, Amazon has, for the last couple of years, been expanding its delivery fleet around the world, first with internal combustion engine vehicles, and then in more recent years and months with electric ones. 
In Europe, we've seen Amazon acquire substantial fleets of electric sprinter vans. In North America, we've seen it roll out the start of a new fleet of Rivian-built Amazon-branded delivery vehicles. But in India, Amazon has just announced a new partnership with Indian automaker Mahindra. The two companies will be working together across many major Indian cities to roll out a fleet of all-electric three-reeled Treo Zor EVs. Based on the all-electric Treo Auto Rickshaw, the cargo variants will be manufactured at Mahindra's LEED certified production facility in Bangalore, or Bengaluru if you are a local. Having toured the facility myself, it is fantastic to see these tiny, efficient EVs help to decarbonize India's heavily polluted and heavily crowded roads. And on that note, we are done for today. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, why not consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to have the switch. And if you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, sustainable power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you to all enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakete! See you next time!